Hey guys, John with you here with another example of Owen Sound City Council dropping the ball. Surprise! I am glad that I uh, waited a day to do this video because initially I was very, very upset with uh, what had transpired and my girlfriend recommended maybe you'll drop a few too many bombs if you do the video now. Maybe you should just calm down. So that's what I did. Took the advice and I calmed down. So uh, for those of you who are not in the know, uh, the city of Owen Sound had been approached by the Poutine Feast. It's a uh, company that organizes a uh, tour around the province of Ontario with multiple stops and they want to add Owen Sound to one of those stops this year. Unfortunately, City Council rejected uh, letting it happen in a 4-4 vote, which uh, took one person who was initially for it going over to the other side. I don't know why he did that because he seemed so supportive at first. Uh, so initially, council members who spoke in favor of the motion said the festival would attract thousands of people to the city's core and it would directly impact the downtown businesses. Correct. That would happen. Uh, Councillor Scott Gregg said the COVID-19 pandemic has negatively impacted restaurants throughout the city, causing business owners anguish and financial hardship. So it would be ill time to welcome the event and its out-of-town vendors to the River District this summer. He also said, I don't see a lot of real value in this. It's amazing. Um, how close these people can be. So um, just a note about Scott Gregg. This particular counselor happens to own the store, The Runner's Den, and that's a store for like jogging enthusiasts, you know, people whose like whole social culture revolves around running. So I can kind of understand why I like that. I would not see any value in it because when was the last time someone ate a jumbo poutine and said, hey, let's hit the track and do some laps. Anyways, I don't know why I'm laughing. Uh, I guess it's the sheer absurdity of it all. And then you have Ian Boddy, the mayor of Owen Sound, saying, we've just seen our restaurants take too much of a kicking being closed, employees working minimum wage, trying to live on tips, etc. Any other year, any normal year, I think we would be, it would be really fun to do this. I think um, businesses need some support right now, and I don't think they'd be happy to go ahead with this. Really? Well, first of all, it's a three-day festival. Second of all, as much as I love poutine, I personally could not eat three poutines a day for three consecutive days. I have to eat other things. I love poutine, but hey, too much of a good thing, it can also extend itself to poutine. Believe it or not, boys and girls, it can. Um, just before I continue with this, I gotta say, this is another reason why we need this poutine festival, is because as far as Owen Sound's poutine scene goes, this city is remarkably pedestrian. So let's say you have all the big corporates, like A&W, Harvey's, they all do it the same way. Pretty much all use the same type of fries, um, the same brand of gravy. So the gravy tastes the same, whether you're going to this restaurant or that restaurant, doesn't matter. And the same uh, pre-packaged bag of cheese curds, right? And then if you look on um, the independent restaurant side, I can't believe how cheap people are in this town. I mean, that's one thing I miss about Montreal. Montreal, it's the Feed the Children program when it comes to cheese curds. They just smother it. They don't care. They want you to be happy and cheese curds equal happiness and another thing I miss about the Montreal scene is they go to the trouble of doing different things you know they'll make their own gravy from scratch or they'll put other kinds of sauces they have imagination here it's just like da 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 oh and don't forget count out each cheese curd and some of these places will charge you like as much as 11 bucks it's ridiculous anyways back on track so Councillor um, Richard Thomas said, we have, as a city, been giving support to those restaurants and food places through our patios and our licensing and our Savor Owen Sound promotion. We do support those businesses downtown, but in our rush to protect the restaurants, we're denying everybody else the possibility of that additional business at a difficult time in the pandemic. Now, going back to this, I wanna mention, if these guys are truly serious about really helping downtown restaurants, there's a huge clause because we have a mega landlord. Anybody who's lived in Known Sound knows exactly what I'm talking about right now. And he owns a lot of the downtown buildings. And what a lot of people are not aware of is that he has put a provision in each of their leases. So every store or restaurant that operates in one of his buildings has to agree to this provision. And that is they must close on Sunday because of his religious beliefs. I'm sorry, but you know, you can go to church if you like. It doesn't bother me, believe whatever you want. It's your business, but when you extend your religion to a town's business and you're prohibiting people from opening on your sacred day, that's economic sabotage. So if 
council really wants to make that change, they might want to look at that. It would make a great deal of difference. And then we have to come, okay, I've heard of this guy before. So there's this one local dipshit, that's my only bomb I'm dropping right now, said it's safe to assume most of the economic benefit of the event would be leaving the city in the promoter's pockets since the festival includes out-of-town vendors. Where do I even begin with this? This is the perfect example of the small-minded, small-town mentality that's been killing Owen Sound's economy for decades. This guy clearly has no business acumen, understands nothing. Um, in fact, the staff report, and this is, this is where uh, we come back to Scott Gregg, who mentioned that he just doesn't see the value in this. The staff report says if 10,000 people were to attend the poutine feast over four days, it would inject 395,000 to 545,000 into the local economy, benefiting local businesses. True. True. I mean, just think of all the things that people would do. They're not just eating poutine. They're going to go out, they're going to check out all the local stores, they're going to stay at the local hotels. Um, they're also going to be buying gas, um, buying alcohol. They're, they're going to be injecting a lot of money into the local economy. So then, this brings us to an article, a report, that came out the same day as uh, the news that City Council voted down poutine. So City Council, on that same day, is asking staff to come up with ways to trim Owen Sound's draft uh, budget by another 90 thousand dollars that's it they're trying to find ways to save a measly ninety thousand dollars they've reached out to the local police department and asked them if they could have offered to make any cuts not a wise idea for those of you who've not been to Owen Sound yet I can tell you right now we have one of the highest per capita crime rates we have a remarkable amount of crime for the size of this place so uh, asking the police to chop not a good idea Another area that they're looking to chop is public transportation, which is much needed here because a lot of people work minimum wage jobs and therefore they can't afford their own vehicles. So they need the public transportation. How else are you going to expect to be served at some of the local restaurants when these people cannot get around? So they're looking to make cuts there instead of looking at implementing Uber or Lyft in this town. That would help a lot. So they're just, they sent that draft back to city count or city staff and they're asking them to find little small things here and there and everywhere that can add up to 90 grand. And then one counselor piped in saying that what they should look for is redundancies in services so that they could start cutting jobs. Who's going to put their head on the block? <laughs> no one's going to find those redundancies. They exist. They exist. I'll tell you right now, they do exist, but no one's going to stick their neck out. These are high paying jobs. Some of the only high paying jobs you'll get. That's why everybody at City Hall is related in one way or another. So that's been the take, but I'm leaving this off on good news. I spoke to the CEO of the Poutine Feast. We are taking action, um, and it looks like we might just have a place to hold the feast close by to Owen Sound. So Owen Sound doesn't get any of the economic benefits. This other region will. I will keep you posted. If you want more news, I'd recommend you subscribe to the channel. That way you'll hear first when we do get that Poutine Fest going. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. I'll talk to you in the next one.